scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This is not the happiest of days. The news of the real world comes to get us. My thoughts are definitely with the people affected, and in many respects, we're all affected. I just recorded a massive podcast about all of my thoughts and feelings about what's just gone on, but that's not why you're listening to this, is it? You're listening to this to hear some bloke you've never met Talk about a programme you've already made your decisions about, whether you like it or not. And I'll play the game. I'll do what I'm supposed to do, which is review things. After all, yesterday I spent ages making some notes, I might as well use them. But reality just feels too big today. Obviously my thoughts are with the people affected. But like I said, this is just a podcast. And I know that some famous people have said, if you've got a microphone... You really should say something worth saying once you have a microphone. And perhaps I will. Perhaps not today. Today, I'll just talk about Doctor Who. Today. This is K9. You are listening to Tin Dog Podcast. Please do not switch off. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. This time talking about Veritas. Well, actually it's not. It's Extremis. Veritas in Extremist Truth in Extreme Situations. Yeah, anybody looking at irony in there is more than welcome. And I know that people are so all. And I know, yes, I know you know, that there are lines about this, about light being truth, and then in darkness our truth, our true natures are revealed. There's all that nonsense going on. And you can make up your own minds and you can come to your own conclusions. Can I ask you a question? When did religion get to be a major part of Doctor Who? I know that Mr Moffat's definitely got a thing about monks. I'm sure I can interview him at some point in his life and ask him great questions about that. Was he brought up by monks? Does he have a knack to grind? There have been headless monks. Nardal was dressed as a monk. I mean, I know Doctor Who has a long and noble tradition of people in big robes and calling them monks is easy enough. But it just seems... Odd is a recurring theme, a motif, if you'd like. So, I've got two pages full of notes, and I'm going to go through them, if you don't mind. I'm sure what we actually need at the moment is distraction. And distraction is what we do best here. Home of the old school thoughts. The Received Wisdom Podcast. That's what we are. Step one. Let's discuss the doctors still being blind. Now, I know that this story doesn't happen in real time in our world. So, the Doctor is blind at the beginning, and therefore is blind at the end, because, let's face it, all he's done is basically received an email. Yeah, that's the entire episode. In the real world, that's Doctor Who World Prime, it is just an email. Okay? He's blind at the beginning, he's blind at the end. However, if you're going to talk about the story, you're going to talk about the contents of the email. Now... Near my house, there's a poster. Bear with me, this does make sense. And the poster is advertising as solicitors. Now, it's we all used to large billboard posters in our lives. We've seen them every day. But these ones are made specifically for them. And they use clip art. They use really random JPEGs. The artwork is bizarre, right? They obviously have no true experience of artistic design or flair, and they're well worth seeing because they're just so damn odd. Now, because they've used clip art or found art on the internet, they've done the typing on their little computer using Photoshop, and then they've sent them off to get printed. So, as you come around the corner, you see the poster, and you see, I don't know, an empty swing, or and something about a divorce, or a doll with its head fell off about abuse and things like that. Like I said, they're a very odd company. But if you're walking past them in the street, unlike posters made by a proper advertising company, these things 
pixelate. These are made of massive squares. They've used standard JPEGs they found off the internet, and the squares that they're made of just look weird. I think you know where I'm going with this. In many respects, this story is kind of like that. On first glance, you go, yep, get it, sorted, fantastic. Just don't look too close. Don't look at the things that make up the squares, that make up the bigger picture, because the bigger picture is quite impressive. Yes, we found out who's in the vault. Yes, we now know what's happening in version one, the Doctor Who Prime world. But in Veritas world, we've got some questions. Right. Many people have pointed out the whole simulated invasion, android invasion thing. Yes, and there's nobody with an eye patch who could take it off to suddenly reveal that their eye was fine all along. Although that does testify to something that also is going on here. People are intrinsically stupid. But the people in this universe find out, variously, that they're not real. But they feel real, yeah? Now, Loads of us have had far, far too much experience of this kind of thing. We've all seen The Matrix. We've all done this sort of thing. We've all been trapped on a holodeck, you know. We've all been trapped in the Doctor Who Matrix. You know, let's face it, Colin Baker still thinks that he's still in there and that the current Doctor is the Sixth Doctor, if you get him on the right day and he talks like that. But that's not what I'm talking about. We've all done Basic Philosophy 101, haven't we? So, is the universe real? Yes. No. But, here's where the Douglas Adamsness of it all comes in. Even if it matters, does it matter that it matters? Now, I know from experience, sadly, that some days you wake up and you think that nothing is real. But you still keep going. Even if you've got proof that you're not a real person, I think, personally, I'd just keep going. I wouldn't want to end it all. I'm not Mario. I'm not getting killed over and over again. Pain is information, but my pain feels real to me. Bizarrely, if we're all in a simulation, we are actually more connected. Yes, we can't alter anything except the world that we're in. But if, say for example, this world, the one you're experiencing now, is a simulation, that actually could make you feel better. Because on some levels, this world is a terrible place. This world is doomed. So if you think that there's another world out there and this is the simulation, then perhaps that other world isn't doomed. That other world is going to learn from our mistakes and is going to sort out the killing of all of the animals. 68% since 1976 of all wild animals are now gone. I Seriously, these are mistakes that we're making in our world and if we're not real, that could actually make you feel better because another world would be getting it right. Now, beyond all that, let's look at the tiny squares that make up the bigger picture. The Veritas itself. What's the point of a document like that actually existing in this universe? It is the clue. It is the get-out clause. Who put it there? It wasn't the Doctor because this is a simulation. How do they know in order to simulate the Doctor and the world, all of the secrets. How could they possibly do that? Yes, a rough approximation is fine, but knowing what's going on in somebody's head in order to reproduce it, that's a very powerful piece of computing. Now, when I first saw this and I saw Bill D. Rez, I actually thought, oh yeah, you're just going to, you know, uh, as soon as you figure it all out, the computer system wipes you and then everyone thinks you've died. But no, the monk actually goes, ah, let's not call the monks, right? I've been thinking about this. It's they're, they're like zombie monks. Can I just say they're a little bit too horrific for Tea Time TV? I was thinking that this was going to be the first season I could watch with my eight-year-old daughter. After seeing this, it's really not going to happen. So, you've got zombie monk, the monks, right? That's what I was thinking of going with. But then I realised, no, they're monk zombies. Monk bees. They're monk bees. I'm going to call them that from now on, okay? So, even if it matters, does it matter that it matters... I think it doesn't. I feel real. These people in the episode felt real. Why would you kill yourself? It's not important. You could actually set up a resistance against them. Because if the simulation manages to feed the Zamunks, then the real then they'll learn. They'll go, yeah, we can't invade because even the simulation can defeat us. You set up some sort of thing. Now, let me also mention that on Friday night, I couldn't sleep. So I skipped through Sky and I found a film I'd not seen. Angels and Demons, the second of the Dan Browns. I think you'll know where I'm going. 
in Injuns and Demons, there is a Vatican hidden library that's got texts that no one can access. It also has CERN, God, I'll talk about CERN more in a few moments. And it also has, well, you know, mysteries that need to be solved. It's got the Pope. It's got the Catholic Church trying to organise stuff. It's got science versus religion and so on. So obviously I watched most of that on Friday, only on Saturday to have to watch something remarkably similar. I don't know why the Pope is in this. I also don't know why the Pope is Italian. Because we haven't really had an Italian Pope for a while. We have them from all over the world. German, South American, Polish. And they're just the ones I can remember off the top of my head. It's quite rare for there to be an Italian Pope. But, you know, I can't say anything about the Popes. They're all Catholic. That's about it. But a few weeks ago we had Jesus was black. Fair enough. Historically considerably more accurate. But now we're picking on the church. And I know all of the politically correct brigade are saying what would happen if they say used a different religious sect or different religious group. Would that cause more offence? And of course, the thing about the Christians is, oh, I've upset you. Well, why don't you just forgive me? Because that's what we're all for on the Christian side, apparently. But I just don't know. It's too similar. Perhaps it's just because I saw it on Friday and then I saw this on Saturday. I just don't know. But of course, the important thing about the Pope speaking Italian is the fact that, well, he actually speaks Italian. This is Doctor Who. The gift of the TARDIS is the gift of tongues, the gift of language. Now, perhaps the other programme doesn't realise that people shouldn't be able to all speak the same language, and that's a bit odd. So the simulation isn't as perfect. And that would be a clue to the Doctor as to why things hadn't been noticed. Or perhaps not. There are some great lines in this. Stuff about the the library and the book that the seat you'd need to sit in to read stuff. I wonder if the original choices in the script weren't Moby Dick. There were other books that would be difficult to get through. Oh, can I just say also, if you like this fourth wall thing, you know, the um, where is reality, where is the simulation, try the sixth Doctor Big Finish story, Fourth Wall. It's a lot funnier than this story. But it does make similar points. I'm not just saying go away and watch the android invasion, because that would be silly. So, Missy's in the vault. Yes. Now, another massive point that I need to make in this is Nardole. Nardole being allowed to kick the Doctor's bottom. Now, yes, we have an example of kicking arse or kicking ass. It's not the same thing. There's a subtle difference. You've been able to say kick ass... For a while, Lord Charles, the ventriloquist puppet back in the 70s, could see it on primetime TV. A silly ass. But ass was almost a swear word. It is not something that I'd go around saying a lot. I'd say bottom. But it is interesting the way that the boundaries are being pushed to what is basically a kid's programme. It's a family programme. I wonder how many complaints there were. Little things like going on a date while you still can. Difficult to organise. Yes, I know that Bill really fancies this girl. And this girl is um, prone to some guilty thoughts, let's put it that way. And I'm guessing it's Catholic because, let's face it, if some bloke turns up in a court, you're just going to worry about things. You won't immediately spot that they're Catholic unless you are Catholic. You have to be told that they're the Pope. But... There isn't enough credibility going to Bill. Bill's performances... Well, let's face it. Pearl Mackey's just great. She's a brilliant find. And I'm sorry that she won't be staying. Genuinely sorry. I hope that there's a wonderful arc. And I also hope in the future that if Big Finish do come back, well, we'll just have her. That she'll do. She'll do me fine. Right. CERN. Before I go, I just need to talk about CERN. I can't see... Now, I know narratively why why it's there, right? I do get it. It's a place we've all heard of, and it's got a load of scientists there. Scientists who know about numbers. But it just led me back to, well, that whole angels and demons thing. Now, some people out there have also asked me how the scientists, these rational people, all A, decide to kill themselves, which is just weird, and B, where they get the dynamite from. Now, there are two possible solutions to the dynamite. 
The first, if you look at the dynamite, is that they make it themselves because they're all very clever scientists. Another possibility is that there was a box full of dynamite round the back, yeah, that would then, you know, that they found and used. But the third one, the most logical one, and that's the reason that the timer is set, is that if you look at the dynamite properly, they get it from the Acme company, you know, Wiley e. Coyote. And it gets delivered almost immediately, just like Wiley e. Coyote's stuff does. And then they can use it straight away. I don't know why they all decided to have it, you know, sellotaped up and uh, then use it. Why? I just can't get why people were killing themselves, right? Because I'm looking too close to the little squares. Just because you're not real. If you feel real, you might as well just keep going. Yes, you might get a little bit depressed from time to time, but so it goes. Yeah, so it goes. So there are lots of questions, and if you look too closely, well, you might not get them. Now, the monks, the Zamunks. Well, here's a question. When they talk, they open their mouths and sounds come out, but there's no lips moving. Does that remind you of anyone? It reminded me of the Mondasian Cybermen. These guys are rotting, falling apart. Again, what the Mondasian Cybermen would look like on the inside. And we know they're coming back. Probably a coincidence. Probably not important because they also look like the monks that were on Zombie. The monks that were in... They also look like the mummies that were in Mummy on the Orient Express. Which of course leads us to next week's Next Time trailer and the pyramids. As my wife said, oh look, Stargate. Yeah. You can't get away with pyramids these days. And I know we had some with River Song, and we've also had pyramids of Mars. So perhaps, just perhaps, a big bad might just be a set of people who work for the Asirens. Bit obvious, a bit on the nose, but you know what? So was Missy in the vault. I've rambled insanely long about this and achieved nothing because, let's face it, it's only episode one of three. And with that, I'll fade away and go and watch the news. So until next time, be seeing you. That was the Doctor Who Tin Dog Podcast, available on iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, RSS, Vimeo, and across the internet. Doctor Who and its associated properties are all copyright and trademark of the BBC. No infringement is intended. Why not become a supporter by visiting patreon.com slash tin dog. Contact the show on tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. 